and i think this is one of very much popular and trending everywhere even flipkart home page does that like amazon home page does that because everyone have that different different thing and they don't want their developer to come oh today we are rolling out the offer let's build and do a deploy at the moment when there is a sales going on right in order to have offline support your data has to be big like google doc is one of the example yeah, google right doc. Google Lab. I'm doing a lot of things. My page is huge, man. I have so many image references and whatnot. I want all of these to be accessible even in my offline mode. How we can do it? Because your index DB supported a lot of data and definitely querying and optimizing and a lot of other stuff which is possible over here. I am getting a lot of ideas for interview ready just listening to all this. Like uh, images, one image loaded can be translated indirectly or you know that sliding window. everyone this is gkcs today we have a very special guest with us chirag goel is the front end engineer or you might know him as engineer chirag uh, chirag has an amazing youtube channel you should definitely check it out if you are looking to move full stack engineering or looking to understand how things happen on the front end in general if you are an engineer i would suggest looking at some of the best videos that he has on front end engineering so uh, yes it will help you today though chirag is uh with us for the next 40 or 45 minutes where we are going to be discussing how the netflix front page can be designed so unless you believe in hotstar a bit too much then you know what netflix is at least uh, netflix is a website where you can watch movies you get a bunch of recommendations in your home page and when you scroll down or you scroll to the right you get all of the thumbnails according to what you want so that's a very high level understanding before we start Chirag welcome uh good afternoon and how are you feeling thanks a lot gorav so right now like to be very very frank i'm very much glad to be part of this collab basically that we are having and having this discussion i uh, also on the same side i am worried about be- because we are going to discuss with like huge like millions of audience at this moment right so yes. but but just wanted to share one personal thing so i have been watching your videos from a long time man the way you have created the impact basically on the system design on the back end side especially it's insane and i really appreciate your effort it i know it takes a lot of effort to bring the high quality content so thanks thank a you. lot gorav thank you chirag in fact what we are looking to do today guys is look at the problem statement from a overall angle not just as i am a back end engineer or a front end engineer but i am an engineer who has to meet the product requirements to make the customer happy customer is the king you are a person who is building something so that the customer is happy and of course then you get paid uh, you know through cash uh, so the idea is that we are going to be thinking about what kind of requirements does this customer need and how do you fulfill these requirements whether it comes from the front end or the back end through api calls or by storing on local storage or whatever be the case the idea is to build a product which is awesome and so this is going to be very relevant for you across uh, any experience level even if you're an experienced engineer i think you'll find this useful i think this video is going to be very useful to you if you're ever having a conversation with uh, a person from the other side so awesome chirag let's let's begin then let's start that video <laughs> yep sounds great i think i really appreciate the way you have said it's more about the product it's more about the engineer not the front end or the back end or the full stack you have to be engineer i really yes. appreciate that so talking about the netflix i see many many features over here so although it has two angle to that one is someone have created this like the supply side of it and second is the demand side of thing mostly we are going to talk about the demand side of thing not the supply side of thing in this particular case yeah oh, awesome okay when you are talking about supply side do you mean the creators uh, yeah the creator so who have okay. created this and uploaded this so we are not going to yeah. cover that it's just that itself is like a big business itself which netflix has captured which is yeah, yeah. you're right uh, we'll we'll focus on the demand side of things like people cars but yeah. if Yashraj creates a picture, then it's no joke to actually have them onboarded on your platform. So yeah, that that itself is a big deal. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah homepage, yeah, <laughs> homepage today. True. So in homepage, there are multiple things. Probably will will cover on the main part, which is our front end page, which is the customizable thing. But on top of it, just wanted to highlight there are other things also. If you wanted to touch upon, maybe not today, but on the other side. One basically, if I I talk about is 
the settings that settings when i talk about it is user management account management like pricing and subscription there are so many things which are hidden gem over there changing the profile based on that many things are also driven over here when i say many things are driven like you have your uh, like many personalized content are driven depending on what kind of profile you have like maybe parental control as a matter of fact so maybe yeah. right now not digging into each one of them sticking to again what we said is our uh, maybe let let me talk about uh, some of the requirements that we wanted to freeze on and probably from there we can get into so yes. talking about requirement so at a high level if i talk about requirement so basically we'll first cover the functional requirement maybe so when i say first functional requirement the one thing which i can see is we have a hero section in this hero section, we have different kind of images that can probably have there. One is image, which sees at the first time. Second, there's yeah. a video which plays at the background. So the most important thing which I feel is a background image, that video, video yeah. player, the video uh, basically that plays, right? So yeah. that is what we, we want. So the other thing which I see is the different categories that we have categories that we have and there is a carousal in each of these category where we can basically uh, actually see the multiple options and that too it has multiple strategic thing when i say multiple strategic thing it can have those thumbnail of a different customized visit if i see so it has different visits we have yeah. categories uh, multiple categories in each categories we have carousal and even if we try to notice probably if i remember it correctly so it has different kind of visits that comes so as a matter of fact, like these are visits which are coming in the portrait fashion and there are some which comes in the uh, thumbnail, like these are visits which basically come in the portrait and there are some yeah. which comes in the landscape, right? And there is yeah. one more variation which I have seen, if I'm correct in Netflix, where it shows the top 10 trending where you get that number one, two, three, along with the thumbnail yes. that we have, right? So basically, yes. these are different kind of visit which can be part of this these particular different carousels configuration that we have. So is this based on user settings or device or is it like Netflix is trying different things? Netflix is trying to promote the content in the different fashion. So sometimes you do not get things basically much appealing when you see in the landscape, but probably when they show you as a top five, five or 10 thing trending in a portrait and the bigger wizard, basically you feel, oh, this is something I should focus on. And that's how they can also prioritize the thing. So there are many things. How do they prioritize their top? 10 streaming things which are happening in the system. Probably this is the one of the way where you change the visit altogether or, or by default you will have those attention. Oh, this is something different from the others. That's interesting. So, they are able to do this level of experimentation. Okay, interesting. All right. So that, that's one thing. Again, I see there are two more things which I, I can recall from this home page. One is basically you get a quick preview. So this preview basically when we talk about on over most of the time. So like hover related preview, when I hover on this, it shows me a playing video on that particular thumbnail without clicking on that so that I get, get a gist of oh, how this uh, video or movie basically look like. Some snippet of a small part of that. That is yeah. one thing which I prefer a lot because you keep on hovering and you keep on seeing the different different things playing on that, right? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. And, and if I can recall, probably if there is some series and I wanted to see how many parts are there, what are the different things are there, instead of actually going and start playing the first, which because also shows me in my history, I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. Probably I wanted to see the detail. So there's a detail page also, if I remember that pops up, basically when you click on that, it shows you a model with the kind of, you can say options, language and multiple things, which cannot be there in the small thumbnail as a matter of fact, right? So, yes. You're talking about the details page of a series, is it like uh, of, of it, any of them, any one of them, like you click any of them, it won't, sometimes it do not take you to the main page. It shows you first the model with the summary of what it basically contains. And if oh. it is a series, it will give you all the episode it has and whatnot. And then finally you can chip in into any one of them. So that's okay. a two step process that it does in order to uh, ensure that you know what you're, you're trying to do. Kind of. Makes sense. And to also avoid unnecessary, probably loading of the video on the detail page where you may be just unnecessarily accidentally clicked on that and you started actually playing the main video player with the all yeah, the and the the whole i mean my experience with netflix is that if you start something it has to be really bad before you stop watching it so yes. uh, unless my experience is excellent i'll not stop watching uh, or, yeah. or rather uh, unless my ex experience is really bad i won't stop watching but i may not be entertained i might just go like after 10 minutes i might go like no this was not for me so it's better to let me you know play around and then that decision makes Which sense okay you have a details page um, Very true. So we have a detail page and yeah. Yeah. I mean, these, these carousels, these categories in themselves are pretty challenging. You, you have different widgets, you have a preview. With that, I think, let me talk about the non-functional requirement, which is a core part of things yeah. like 
like we are talking about netflix right without that it's very difficult to like sustain with a high customer base and what not correct thing which, yeah. which a quick one which i can see as you said about their performance like when it is very heavy right it has too many images it has video playing some so when you hover on that video start playing on the background there is a video which is playing and on top of it i have seen there are some personalization that also happens so let me put some words over there and i maybe we can drill down into the performance and rest of the things in the uh, very next go so one is the performance which i see second is compatibility with with our different devices because obviously the same thing plays in your mobile it plays in your desktop and what not so those kind of compatibility uh, can be one thing second uh, the third primary thing which i see is your configurable ui so when i say configurable ui so each of these page home page the way it looks like to you and the way it look like to me and the other people is entirely different you may be having different carousels different settings different visit and i may be having a different uh, visit altogether how that is possible it is possible one of the ways you have a configuration and based on that configuration something is basically driven over here like you dynamically decide this is my configuration this is my content and this is my uh, basically the look and feel the layout and finally combines together to create your home page and i think this is one of very much popular and trending everywhere even flipkart home page does that like amazon home page does that because everyone have that different different thing and they don't want their developer to come oh, today we are rolling out the offer let's build and do a deploy at the moment when there is a sales going on right so that is yeah. not possible <laughs> so that is uh, is one probably which i feel is very important over here again the localization part is also which i feel is very important because we are talking netflix it goes to multi region multi language and what not and considering the language factor is something which is very very important in such scenarios and no one can debate, like say no to ab testing the the amount of ab testing which basically netflix does is insane and controlling in terms of the features controlling in terms of your content many things so when i say ab testing there are many things that you can control on the front end development many things in terms of content that you have to do when you are developing on the back end side as a combination all together this ab goes to a very next level right so which which is insane okay so with that uh, do you want me to pull into any other side of thing on the non functional thing or maybe we can stick to this maybe there are others which is obviously the core which is streaming if you want <laughs> yeah yeah streaming is is perfect i think uh, this covers pretty much all the functional and non functional requirements we have apart from this like you mentioned ab testing already so that i guess includes you have so many devices here uh, which you mentioned the mobile and desktop so yeah that's that's interesting we can we can go ahead with this this covers most of the requirements that we possibly can okay we, we perfect so maybe uh, i think there are many things we can do in terms of the prioritization and what not maybe maybe let's if you are okay let's talk about some critical part of the netflix where we can chip in and showcase the real power one is definitely this performance uh, side of thing which is very very important when we talk about so many images so many videos basically right uh, second is yes. configurable like how you can like write it once just change on your configuration your page is changing for different different people right so any other thing that you want me to pick and uh, basically let's dig deeper into that i think Uh, one thing which is a challenge would be the device uh, where you have different resolutions yes. uh, that would also be a sounds a serious sounds challenge fair. i think sounds fair let's let's talk about these thing and in terms of uh, this automatically will be covered if we talk about the configurable ui probably let's let me try to do the justice if if possible <laughs> Sure, okay sure. so uh, okay maybe uh, talking about the non functional requirement how we can achieve maybe like i think everyone knows how to break down the component and how to build a component so not getting into the implementation of the component detail maybe talking about something more more you can say engineering side of strategic way of of things like one jira if you had to you know learn about components where could they go would they go to your channel or would you do you know of any resources where they can study as a component how do you develop yeah. so uh, so are, are we talking about react components react something? component basically what i meant by how do you break down your your page into a small small chunk right how that mindset okay. basically okay. what i meant by 
So individual components oh, is covered. Like when I say individual uh, system design components, those are covered. It's more about the front end uh, components, how your page basically get divided into a small, small reusable chunk. Sure, sure. Sorry. Oh, okay. Now I, I get okay. that. Yeah. So perfect. So uh, we'll let's let's talk about some of the uh, maybe performance things as as you just uh, pissed into. One is definitely people chipped into like page. They want everything to be visible then and there, right? It's a high expectation. I want to when I go to nestle.com, there is no loading, there is no blurry. Everything comes on the uh, on the at the same time. So in all, yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in a not even a second. Sometimes people want like dude. Yeah. Even I have not stopped typing. <laughs> you show me the page, right? So the the expectation is growing to the next level on the web. So uh, now, so one thing which I wanted to highlight when we do end up into the any of the website, there are many things that people do, which is something called resource hinting. So when I say resource hinting, before even touching into the actual loading of the content, it try to tell what are the things which I am going to do the next. Try to prefetch some of the things which are primary thing. These can be like I wanted to make a connection to all the CDNs basically from where I am going to load the data. So I'm not going to waste the time when I actually go and ask for give me the images for from these these CDN. It's just that at the first request itself, I have made all those connections so that my round trip can be basically reduced. On top of it, there are certain resources which I need. There are some CSS JS which can be loaded pre pre defined basically so that when my actual HTML comes and it finds out okay these are the next set of things that can be there. So there are many strategies which can be done in terms of prefetch preload. Reload and there are pre-connect a lot of other stuff that can be done. So that is first thing which I feel uh, that that should be uh, done in this particular space in order to achieve it. Now, talking about the second thing which is very important is about your assets. Like there are so many assets. Like starting from images, it booms. One critical thing which I, yeah. which I feel is in terms of images. Forget about images. First, I talk about in in general. Say suppose we have. What are the things that we have to optimize? We have to optimize videos, images. Then we have to optimize our JS and CSS. These are primary things in terms of the load time and definitely the API responses. We'll come to the API responses, how we can optimize these API responses and what we should do probably. But before even the we hit the API, there are certain things that need to be uh, loaded uh, on the screen as a default probably and whatnot. So what, what happens? Browsers have some limits. Like if I talk about HTTP 1, we cannot make more than like six requests at a time in the same time, basically, because that is not feasible at all, right? So browser have their own constraint in terms of queuing, prioritization, and whatnot. Mm. And if we see at a time over here, boss, there are more than 30 images or something that at a time we see in the first fold of the screen itself. So in that perspective, yeah. I feel HTTP2 have solved a lot of stuff. Like when I say HTTP2 have solved a lot of the stuff in terms of providing multiplexing, in terms of push server push mechanism where I'm asking for the HTML and it is also giving me the JavaScript and the CSS and the critical part of that particular page along in a single request, one single live connection and it is start providing me a lot of asset from the server to the client itself, right? So that has solved one of the bottleneck which people were having, oh, I need to look for like 20, 30 requests at a time. And because you are limiting me, I cannot load everything. So what people used to do a strategic way, which I remember uh, today also, they used to have the something called a sprite, which we still do, which we still do somewhere. That is sprite is kind of something like we have a big, you might have uh, noticed that we have a big, uh, you can say image and that images, there are partitioned with a lot of other images. When I say, so there are, contains some grid system and in that particular grid system, you have some images like this, all the images are in the basically yes. so you use one image and you change the position of this particular image and you show it as a background image with that particular windowing logic like we have sliding window concept right so it used to have the sliding window concept in order to showcase that particular piece wherever you want instead of loading 10 20 30 images it loads only one single images which has many of these images combined together and just changing the position in the windowing it used to do a lot of stuff so that was one of the Oh, okay. No, I didn't know this. This is yeah. 
this is very intelligent <laughs> so this thing you used to do because you have limit right you cannot request for like 30 images over there and this i yeah, yeah. facebook started doing long back for especially for uh, thumbnails and icons basically there like they have huge icon now we actually ended up into the svg icon and different ways where you can get it as in code but earlier long back it was actually a image right so they have to rely on those strategies in order to do that where i see many they, even i will tell you this strategy is still used in google in in youtube basically so when 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 we have this kind of player uh, even in netflix i remember we have this player on on this timeline whenever we hover we see some uh, uh, you can say thumbnail time stamp with that particular like we get some previews on that time stamp yes yes so these are not different images it's a single image big images with those sprite kind of behavior where we just change the position and do not load the n number of images in order to achieve that so very very strategically and intelligently they have handled this thing because they know how many previews they wanted to show in in what frame they wanted to show which preview and what not right it's not like they don't show you for every seconds right they show you for some frames basically so that, that is, is oh wow so they have one big image which they splice into many pieces and then they just take the part that they want so they just slide it's a sliding window so say suppose consider example i have some thing to be displayed over here just only things which are visible over inside this will be visible oh. to you rest everything is hidden if okay. you have you can just peep into this window right like ah. we have we have some uh, like uh, marriage ceremony going on in our colony what we see is only peeping the stuff which are there in the window that we have right similar kind of thing right so you have big canvas which we have n number of images such that they have the algorithm right where you know at what number and what these grids basically dimension have like each of this grid have the same dimension but isn't this a very large image isn't the uh, size of the image with us again so the cost of uh, asking for 10 20 images where it can be stuck into the browser you can say limitations how many requests you can make where are you are asking one single images where it can be maybe 2x of the total size but eventually if you see how much total data that you loaded for the thumbnail and one single thumbnail that you loaded you will see overall benefit is over here in the sprite that's outstanding yeah that's so that's that is a very yeah, i didn't know this <laughs> i i was thinking it's only um it's only making like massive number of api calls but that that is a very dumb idea yeah okay yeah, yeah. very yeah. very strategic way to solve they, they use different different strategies so i i i can recall multiple things like in terms of obviously when we talk of images uh, there are other things also which is preferred like you should use uh, webp uh, web webp kind of thing basically or you can say webm kind of thing in order to uh, load your data your media basically either you go for images and what not so this is for webm is you load for the videos So now in videos there are multiple interesting thing happens. So I have seen people doing very strategically. What they do, they wanted to show you some preview, and that preview there are two ways. One, they stream that preview. Maybe that preview is for hardly few seconds, thirty second. Second way is they provide you MP4, like they can go for MP4 or or this webm what what I just talked about. So they can go for any of these version, or probably they go with the uh, GIF where. actually those are changing and they are actually having those kind of thing what people have started doing a very smart way because they wanted to have the personalized data also what they started providing you a blob so which is you have base 64 encoded data which you are having stored in the db probably gorav you can help me on that so that helps you to also maintain your privacy say suppose i have some content because if i put in a cdn like if you have the cdn link mostly it is going to be like available for everyone public, right uh, yeah so which is public but if i put a very small chunk as an base 64 which is a video a base 64 and put into the database and i wanted to serve you say suppose the home page the home banner that we see for you it may be different for me it will be different and for people it will be different and ensuring that it is not also public right so this is something where base 64 i have seen people to leverage passing down and using it into the video player and getting the job done like that is one of the strategic way i have seen people to like doing over here so 
and creating an entire file in this case is also not the best way like one of the you can just add a row uh you don't need a entire file system for this that makes a lot of sense if the if the block is small especially then pulling it out is will help a lot yeah will help a lot right you have a very small blob because you wanted to show for a very small few seconds kind of thing that goes around right and, and you the, the foreign key of this is yeah it's a makes sense yeah. so so who uses this uh, so, like uh, netflix does this so okay. it, it, i remember netflix doing this i remember youtube doing this many of these they do this even especially for for pages which are not that public so consider example how do we secure some content probably one is we secure have everything stream files via the auth layer right yeah. but probably for the small small chunk i don't want to follow those all entire process and what not i put in the database where all the other authentication is going on along with that this data will be also authenticated and you will get the small chunk to remove lot of hubs also which i feel people use in a very strategic way makes sense it's very interesting you can cache this stuff also you can cache this the... stuff on the on the client when you get this data you have the base 64 uh, you you cache it and that brings to a very interesting thing which probably uh, in in uh, we we can talk about the caching that we can happen on the the client right as you said the one caching is definitely which, which people underestimate which i feel is a index db so index db is so powerful like even microsoft teams even whatsapp chat all the content that we open the web version of that and we see all our histories are there and we are able to search and do lot of stuff on that and also helping us syncing between the different system that is being possible because of the index db and the searching queries and lot more capability that we get on top of the index db that it does right instead of every time compressing stringifying putting the local storage and achieving that index db plays a very good role when you have something which can be queried it can be normalized denormalized and you what you can play around that right so you want can have some references this this becomes very very powerful which i see at that moment index db is correct me if i'm wrong is it like mysql yeah so basically what you have is a you can consider this a no sql where you have the document kind of thing you don't have fixed schemas you decide what your schema uh, document is going to look like and you like you query in the no sql you query in the index db on the client interesting interesting and why do they call it index db do, do you have an index or you have indexing indexing capability also <laughs> Okay, interesting. So, so well, that is stuff that uh, you can store in the browser itself. Are there any yes. memory limitations to it? Like you can't store more than this. Ha! Huh. So there is always, but again, if you are on Chromium browser, most of the time they are very smart. They 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 are able to leverage many MB. Like there are limitations in terms of five MB data, especially when we talk about local storage and other. But when we talk about index DB, I have seen. people having many like hundreds of mb's data in, in your index db right so you can think of the scale i am talking about uh, in terms of that right it's more around uh, it it kind of shares the memory which the browser basically have and gives you lot more capability to leverage that because they wanted to promote the client side of thing and especially the pw when we say pwa right that brings to another one important thing like you can have offline support in order to have offline support your data has to be big like Google Doc is one of the example, yeah, right? Docs. Google Doc. I'm doing a lot of things. My page is huge, man. I have so many image references and whatnot. I want all of these to be accessible even in my offline mode. How we can do it? Because your index DB supported a lot of data and definitely querying and optimizing and a lot of other stuff which is possible over here. That's outstanding. Yeah. Okay, okay. I am getting a lot of ideas for interview ready just listening to all this like uh, images. One image loaded can be. translated indirectly or you know that sliding window i think index db is something we use but we can leverage this for something like offline mode also which will be amazing yes so one of the like in offline you have always a limitation like where do you store either you use the service worker worker but again in service worker also you don't have capability to query things it's just like you can query, like cache some apis which is okay like if i have get api i can cache but i do want it to perform some operation do some join look up for one thing do from other thing then it becomes difficult now it is like a db 
like you you perform things like i wanted to look up some ids from here wanted to go into some other places do some crazy stuff those it helps a lot like all those your service worker can help you to achieve a lot of thing in terms of caching but not to the extent wow and then why do people make api calls if they have <laughs> so with that i will tell you one strategic thing in flipkart what people used to do even the api that you have those are cached in the service worker is just that if you have making a get call so that and they define the custom uh, you can say event time in how much time it is going to expire so that if you have frequent request coming in like for five minutes sort of thing you do not make a negative request dude i am not going to change the data in five minutes right so you should just leverage that so those kind of strategic thing in the api responses are also people are doing that at scale because obviously a scale that comes into the picture you cannot have everything on the plate yeah, there's some something has to be compromised do you uh, think that you know small or medium sized companies should consider this or is it mainly for large companies huge number of users massive bandwidth requirement okay so for that what i will i wanted to suggest one thing which is a uh, investment on on top of the opportunity the cost opportunity that you get right if this can be say suppose roll out in a day or so then why don't why why don't we save yeah, on yeah. the other side of the aws cost and the infra cost that we have right correct so correct. where these things are not not going to take much time it's just that you should know how to achieve that in service worker and now there is there a lot of tool in order to help you uh, to achieve those things you can also look at the pain points i guess and say that oh you know this pain this part point. this part we can index exactly that and part. especially as you said if data is not personalized if data is not customized right data is not going to be some you can say personal data or some authenticated data index db is good place why don't you why every time you come pull down a lot of data from the server and do those things put it in the index db and have some uh, timer or some some evic time where you see oh if there is change or something you go and look up for that else my index db is more than enough in order to serve a lot of data like even even say suppose you are having the back end side of where you have system where lot of requests are going for nodes for chats for lot of stuff which is happening on the dashboard right those kind of thing can be leverage a lot in terms of the index db which is not going to change frequently right yeah the contents these things never change they are more is added but then we can always expire it yeah 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 which okay. you other thing which i is my personal very i i love that which is lazy loading or which is as you so again we talked about a strategy http2 and what not which won't limit you bring on it's like says bring on you hit me 50 mm -hmm. 100 request i can but you really wanted to bring on if user is not interesting to go to the last fold of your screen right so okay. that is something which is strategic which mostly which is done is a uh, what people generally does is you have this background basically right background video so this background video is again you have a player basically which is working running on, on the side and even with the player i wanted to help understand few of the things which i understand basically we'll we'll talk about that but before you have multiple these sections having right which are carousel kind of thing what people does is something looking for some configuration over here get this render and not everything but again that brings a very good question to you maybe uh, gora which is i have two kind of lazy loading that has to be done maybe if i have to uh, plot this in a bigger fashion so this is very interesting problem statement to solve which is you have this hero banner over here and uh, probably you have these carousel so you have something you can keep on navigating on the right hand side on top of yeah. it keep going on the down side so there are yeah. two pagination which are happening one is on the infinite scroll you scroll 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 which is fetching the data and on the right hand side you click on that you get more 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 data on the right hand side right that's correct yeah yeah like swing and zomato also same like thing yeah zomato that brings to a important thing when we are making a api call in that api call what sort of content we are asking like give me the data but now the data is going to be maybe if it is a flat then how it is going to happen if it is category wise then how much in each of these category has to be loaded right so because if i understand correctly these data are also not stored in the same table and the same place in the database right those are stored at a different different places in databases right 
So bringing them in a single API layer and ensuring that there's a pagination that happens also along with that, that brings to a next level complexity, I, I feel. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah, it's 2D pagination. 2D pagination is not something that I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever tried 2D pagination. So okay. there are one thing which I wanted to talk about, which is again, very interesting, especially in the kind of the perf. One is most of the people don't understand, which is DPR, right? So when I say DPR, it is device pixel ratio. Device pixel ratio. Okay. So what, what it helps? So right now, my system can be on some X resolution. You may be using 4X resolution of what I am. If I'm okay. asking Netflix, okay, give me the images, basically considering it is 4X, I'm just wasting the bandwidth basically on my 1X screen. Yes, because yes. my device pixel ratio is basically very small and in your case, the device pixel ratio is very high. So the quality which is needed at my end, the quality which is needed at your end is going to be drastically changed. Even though I'm uh, requesting from the desktop, like if I'm requesting from the mobile and the desktop, it is very obvious over here. That's why I think most of the CDNs probably that we might have seen in query patterns of those CDNs, basically we, we see something called you define your DPR, like either that is one, two X, three X, or how much DPR you need and definitely your uh, dimensions like width and height, which is definitely the other thing. So, so either of them, you compute it and provide me what are the dimension that you need in order to show that, or you provide me the DPR so that I know what, what uh, resolution I have to compute it and provide you to that. So that also helps in order to provide without pixelation uh, and without wasting your bandwidth where you could have shown in one KB, I'm sending you 10 KB or data unnecessary, right? Yeah, so it, it is slow down. The, so uh, then... It, these are query params like question mark something, or do you have a route separate like question mark and you pass this configuration? Like most of the CDN, basically it says that, okay, you tell me the resolution that you want. You tell me the DPR basically you are looking for and maybe other parameters. Like sometimes they also talk about the quality that you're looking for. Like, do you want some high resolution quality or you are looking for, okay, compromise on pixel per, pixel version, which also bring me, I can, I can keep talking, which also bring me the median strategy of image loading the images. What median used to do? They used to load one pixel image. That one pixel image, they used to scale to that maybe 300 cross 300 because it has gradients. So when it scales, it looks like you have a gradient image loaded and it looks like, okay, that it seems like an image, actual image, but it may be loading behind the scene. Then you finally see the overall image because they replace that in a very strategic way where you give you a sense, dude, ha, this is something which is a bit blurry, but eventually you will get that uh, thing. So one pixel is really interesting. <laughs> yes. Yes. So they have very high, you can say DPR one pixel basically. And if you uh, is zoom it, it won't pixel rate. The beauty is it won't pixel rate to a, that extent that it looks like that boxes boxes, but it will give you a sense. Like there is some gradient of that particular size. When I say one pixel, like one, two, three, depending on yeah. what resolution it is. Right. Right. Small image. No, okay. I, I can, I can get the point that, you know, you have such a small image and then you stretch it. You, yeah. And, and so it's really slight. And later on, people, when the image is loaded, you can say, oh, yeah, of course, it makes sense. It was loading in the background. So the feeling is right. Yeah. The UX is good. Yeah. So that that is one crazy thing which I can, uh, I can see. Maybe, maybe one thing which I wanted to touch upon, which is one of, again, configurable UI. So maybe I can talk over here. Okay, so when, when I say configurable UI, it has multiple part of it. One is the DSL basically. The second part is basically you have visits, you have this and you have something. So let me quickly uh, talk about one is the DSL, like any of the HTML, React or the JSON or the YML, everyone is having a DSL, right? So the second part is basically you have some data config. So you have some data, you have some visit. So when I say visit, like we were talking about right, right now. I have a configuration of my home page where I see I have one first page, which is my, my hero section. Second is my carousel. Third is something this. So what I'm providing is actually a config. So this is, this is what I'm providing. The second thing, which is there is a DSL in order to understand this config, you have some language defined around that, right? So this combo basically helps you to structure, configure any of the 
layout of your page in one you are saying my first is going to be uh, 10 top videos in second i am going to say okay this is going to be my recommendation third is going to be something different maybe hindi english or uh, kannad as a precise then you merge with the data which is actual data which we get from the api you get that data combine it over here what you basically have now every of these data along with the data you define something called type so these type maybe i'm saying this is my portrait uh, maybe uh, this is my carousel example this is my hero section it can be any such thing and with respect to each one of these type there is something called which is called visits like what we call is a ui component when i say visit probably i can uh, name it better which is these are ui components so you have ui component associated with each of these type what do you get you when you iterate through the config that comes you keep on checking acha this is the type i got let me pull the data which is i am getting from the api for that and i know which component i have to basically leverage i will merge all those three things what i will get is the final outcome is my final html that need to be rendered or maybe html react whatever we call it the final html raw html or the react outcome that i will get and that can be rendered this make it so insane that you can have those configuration ready with you and at the time of sale for say suppose for different different reasons for india we are showing something else in different countries we are showing some different look and feel of the home page of netflix probably right and where we can try out some lot of abs when i say abs i wanted to show you oh top 10 trending videos in a format of probably anything like you have one, two, three somewhere. If, if I get it somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> so you, you have something called one and trending image, two trending image kind of thing, right? So you yeah. do a lot of ABs basically. Try to showcase in a different, different trending uh, visit and see what are the uh, like people are liking. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, as you said. So that is what that brings to a more power. You just config different, different visit type different different ui component you have already defined automatically based on the configuration it will just load that particular component you merge provide the data which actually renders this uh, page altogether like this so that is very powerful in terms of uh, like configuration where i see the adoption has increased people have realized instead of like every time there is a new look and feel instead of every time building some new 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 pages and asking developer to come and contribute on a repeated problem let's solve that in one single solid way where you yeah your sales person the marketing person the people who are the content creator behind the scene who are driving the business the business analyst come up with their ideas research and whatnot they design what is going to work right and that is how basically i feel this netflix also does that configurable uh, ui in this particular case because i have seen i am having something else my wife is having something else on, on her screen in terms of visits also which makes me think oh dude what happened yeah I, uh, so do you think that this is also something like uh, a cohort or do you think like you know this is so ab testing would be like okay let's try out what do people like correct so this is definitely a point because individual level practically that has massive scale Netflix has next to impossible. So most of these are cohort and especially those cohort where they want they build something new and they wanted to roll out to a very small piece of chunk of people and see how things basically work out, right? If New Zealand the adoption and whatnot, right? Yeah, I've I've heard this thing about New Zealand that because it's uh it's like you know by by the time the people in New Zealand wake up. Uh, by night, USA is ready to wake up. So yeah. what happens is they launch in New Zealand, they check if everything is fine, whether users are liking it or not. And then if the A-B test succeeds, then they they don't want to take it to A-B test to US. They just deploy to prod. So uh, th this is something that quite a few companies do. Yeah, 12 hours is a decent amount of time. It's interesting to think that looking at, you have a data schema language, you have a bunch of configurations, you have some data that the user is working on, Leveraging this itself is a big engineering challenge. Like yes. writing something to make this happen is big. And then you have those components being placed in the right places and choosing yeah. what components to load is also a challenge. Yes, which is something which is driven on these and the real complexity which comes, which I feel is the version. Like the kind of these 
individual UI component can also have different different versions. Or probably you decide, okay, if I'm doing a major change, breaking change, I will rename the component name instead of making the change yeah. in the same component type, right? Those strategy has to be taken in place. If there are version changes, then I, I guess it depends on, I mean, if you have an app and it's pointing to the old version, that so, would be... Now complexity comes, your data, which is coming from some API, that is working on some different version. The component that you have shipped, that, that time delay between the actual when your microservices are getting deployed and when your front-end yeah. CDNs basically get deployed, uh, which contains your DSL and whatnot. So this race condition or the time gap basically which can hamper a lot of people, right? And especially when you have yeah. AB. You may be doing AB of your front-end stuff independently and your back-end stuff independently. Now you are forced to do your ABs is like ensuring that your yeah, release yeah. cycles are same, which is insane in big companies. Like you can't have the same yeah, release yeah. cycles. That kind of tight coupling is insane. <laughs> yeah. Interesting that they okay okay. I can see tremendous amount of complexity in the in the front end design space itself. Okay, so uh, Chirag, then I think we talked about configurable UIs. We talked about performance. Yeah. You know. That was super interesting. Configurable UIs is also like looking really, really challenging. Uh, and so how do you, like, um, if we had to design the APIs around mm -hmm. this, right? That how are you going to, what kind of data are you expecting of any API call? We talked a little bit about CDNs, yes. but um, on the server side, what would be the expectation? Yep. There, like, what kind of API there are many doing? expectations which I'm going to bombard uh, to you. One is sure, one sure. is definitely one one is something which I want this how my page is going to look like in terms of skeleton or the structure basically, which can help us to first at least have me the skeleton ready so that people see something. Maybe uh, it can be very smart move where say suppose data is taking some time but i'm ready with something is a skeleton ready over here right and eventually i can ask okay give me the data for this so that i can fill this particular thing so what i i need is get me the dsl uh, config probably right so which obviously it takes a lot of things which are user related information which you know as an uh, from from the network request itself in the header itself you can basically grab a lot of information about the user. Like when I say like which browser you are using, right? There are two, two things. You already have the user ID with that in your cookie. Uh, this is user ID. Where I say user ID, you know the personalization for, for this user, right? So what kind of content that need to be served to this uh, category of the user. The second is the other kind of information like you know the browser which user is using OS basically if anything has to be driven based on this cohort that can be basically driven on this basically this get me the skeleton of this there are two strategic way one I can ask okay for for the DSL ID probably if I'm talking about that for this DSL ID can you provide me the data for this right that is one where in the response where I'm expecting okay uh, can you give me some DSL along with that tell me which type of configuration it is and along with that I'm asking you give me the data for this particular DSL configuration right so in this what major kind of expectation is obviously the data is something which is expected it's something you help me with different so if I have to simplify this problem statement to may not make a very complex problem statement so this can be considered as an different sections that we have and each sections how much different rows or columns basically probably we can have right so if i say give me the list of all possible sections so what you basically provided maybe if i say the first section is something which contains this category uh, or you can say the section name which talks about okay i'm a hero section right and it contains some data yeah. so when i say data so there are many metadata basically which is required for that. When I say Yeah, you have the title and everything. Everything yeah, as sense. a matter of fact, right? So that is something which is expected over here. So if I have to simplify things, I'm I may be looking for title, I may be looking for preview URL, I may be looking for okay. When I click on this, what is my landing URL? Right. So help me with that also because I need to take user to the different screen, right? 
so that is what can be there there can be other language support tell me the language descriptions other set of metadata basically which is expected out of this particular uh, first section that we have which is hero uh, section we we call it right now there can be other yeah. such sections also like talking about we hi i am just uh, to elaborate so maybe consider the next kind of sections we have is something which is maybe i am naming it uh, maybe i have a recommendation section recommendation probably right this is what we have and in recommendation what is required i need some basic metadata obviously over here also so that metadata talks about okay uh, some some basic things like what is the title of recommendation that you wanted to show to the user how many videos basically are going to be there in this particular recommendation any any metadata information which can be expected and then probably something which is videos which is a list of uh, metadata which is expected over here right where initially as we said this can be total to be huge maybe 20 30 what not and this videos probably may be getting initially like how much maybe Six is more than enough in order to showcase, right? Which can help us to provide the horizontal scroll in future, in order to avoid loading of all the content at the same time, right? So probably this is this is what our carousel or our video is basically going to look like.